Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here today. And I wanted to start with just a quick announcement. And that announcement is to say that I knew this was going to happen sooner or later. I lost my alb somewhere. Uh, that's the white thing I wear for church. And I, I was sure I had it in the office here, but taking it back and forth between here and Courtney, I'm not sure where it is right now, but I, what's that? It's in Courtney? I don't know where my all is. No, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy Lee. I, that's right, I forgot about that. Um, so maybe I'll remember next time. We will begin our service now. Would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with our opening hymn. Let's turn our hearts and minds toward God. As we gather together in his holy presence this morning, let everyone here confess their sins. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are truly sorry for disappointing you and sinning against you. We haven't done the things we should have, We've been too tired or lazy or have tried to put them off until a later time. We certainly have done too many things we shouldn't have. We have lacked the willpower to say no. We have gone along with others even when we knew it wasn't right to do so. We have stood idly by while others break your commandments. We deserve your anger and your punishment. 
Please, Lord God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for all the things we have done. Help us to love you more and to do your will. The good news is this. God in his mercy has heard the cries of his people. His son Jesus was sent to die for us to take the punishment for the sins we have committed. Because of his death and resurrection, we are forgiven. Our sins are washed clean. We can rejoice in the forgiveness of God. All who believe in Jesus are given the power to become children of God and live with him in heaven forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And I've got something kind of cool. If you want to come up here, I'll show it to you. And the rest of you guys probably would like to come up too, but you'll just have to stay where you're at. Do you want to come up here? I want to show you something cool. Or do you want to stay there and I'll show you? Oh, you're both going to come. Okay. Good morning. This is Johnny. Johnny? It's this nice to meet you. Tom. I'm Pastor Tom. So I got, you can sit down if you want. No. I brought, no, okay. I brought something. And actually, maybe it's a good thing I don't have my white robe. Because it, what I brought today is my Leatherman tool. And I think you guys all know what that is, right? One of those multi-tools? I don't know. Have you ever seen one of these before? No? It's got pliers. It's got a wire cutter. It's got a little screwdriver. And you can even change the tip around. And you can get more tips. I have them at home. And it has a little hook thing. I think that's a can opener. It's got a screwdriver. It's got ugh, a little screwdriver, so if you have glasses, you can fix them. Wow. It's got scissors. Isn't that the tiniest little pair of scissors you've ever seen? Yeah. But they're nice and sharp. They work really well. And I, I think I saved the best for last. I'll put these, put these back in because I don't want to cut myself on a can opener. I'll close this up. There. This is cool. Ready? Got a knife Ooh. and a little saw. Now I'm not sure if this saw is for like falling timbers, but I do know it works really good. You know when you buy hot dog buns and they're not cut? Yeah. I used it at a picnic one time. It is really handy for all kinds of things, and it does just amazing things. And it kind of reminds me of the Bible. Because there's all kinds of amazing things in the Bible that are helpful to us. Like in the Bible, we hear how much Jesus loves us, right? And then he died for us, and then he's always with us, and he forgives us for everything. And that's really handy when you're maybe feeling a little sad or scared or worried. We can look at the Bible and remember how much Jesus loves us, and that he died so that we can live with him forever. So that's even more useful than this, isn't it? Because you, you can take that with you in your heart wherever you go. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads. I'd think about that for a minute because one time I told people to fold their heads and bow their hands. So, and let's pray. And you can, I'll say a little bit and you can repeat after me with everyone else. Okay? Yeah. We thank you, God, we thank you, God, for your word, for your word and, the love we hear and the love we hear when we look to it. When we look to it. Help us to remember Yes. You're with us always. With us always. Amen. Amen. Okay, thanks for coming up. It was nice to meet you. And maybe when you get older, you can get one of these. This was a gift, by the way. And it's my most favorite gift maybe for a long time. Because it's sharp and dangerous, right? <laughs> Our first reading for this morning is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 to 10. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pull out the, my beard. 
I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring any charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. Our second reading is from James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, and it will serve as the basis for our meditation this morning. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know, <clears throat> excuse me, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures have been tamed and have been, and have been tamed by mankind, but no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings who have been made in the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading is from Mark chapter 9, verses 14 to 29. When they came to the other disciples... They saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit and has, been, and has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsing him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
dear friends in Christ. I want to start my sermon today with a riddle, and we'll see if you can figure out that riddle. It goes like this. I am often held, but seldom touched. I am always wet, but never rust. I often bite, but have no teeth. To use me well, you must have wit. What am I? What's that? Yes, a tongue. Often held, hold your tongue, but seldom touched. Always wet, never rusts. Often bite, but have no teeth. Right? What, what we say, there can be some bite. In the book of James, the apostle tells us uh, many things, very practical things for living our lives as God's people. Uh, and it's a very down-to-earth, um, kind of like a how-to guide as to how we as God's children should live our lives. What's interesting, and I'm going to look here so I get these statistics right, there's 108 verses in the book of James. 46 of the 108 talk about the tongue or speech or language in some way. Okay, so 43% of the book of James talks about the tongue and what is said. So it's, it's a big part of what he's trying to convey to the believers of his day and the believers in our day as well. He begins by saying, not many of you should become teachers because you'll be judged more harshly. Now, I have to admit, there's times as a pastor when I hear that verse and it kind of makes me go, right? Because I'm going to be judged differently. By the way, I, I'm not completely convinced that's necessarily judged by God, although I think that's part of it. Uh, and that in itself is scary enough. But what really scares me is that I may say something that will, will hurt or destroy someone's faith because I'm a teacher I'm right I'm a pastor and I'm in a way I'm God's representative here in this place and, and in this congregation I mean right I bring God's word to you each week and so what the words I say can have a, a, a great impact on people or the things I do and I think I shared this story uh, maybe a few years ago I can't remember now uh, Wendy Lee was in church one Sunday morning, and one of the Sunday school kids came up and said, where's God? And Wendy Lee's like, well, he's in heaven. No, where's God? Well, he's, he also, he's in our hearts. And Where's God? Well, you know, he's everywhere, trying to figure out. Like, And then I came around the corner, and the little kid said, there he is. <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> right? Because can you imagine if God didn't have a good sleep last night and got up on the wrong side of the bed? You know, like me, right? And if I snapped at some little kid, and they're like, it wasn't just the guy in charge. It wasn't just Pastor Tom. It was like God was mad at him, right? And I think that's what they're talking about is, is if you have become a teacher in the faith, you, you need to hold yourself to a higher standard because the people around you look at you differently. But what, he, what James has to say applies not only to pastors, but to all believers. Because when we're at home or out in the community, when people look at us, they probably, hopefully, know you are a Christian and that you go to church with some regularity, right? And so the things you say are a reflection, not just on yourself and what's in your heart, but ultimately on God. And the number one excuse people use for when they don't go to church is because I don't like hypocrites, right? I mean, I think that says something to the fact that we all struggle with the tongue, with the things we say and the things we do. But actions take a little more thinking. Sometimes we can talk without thinking at all, right? Uh, it just comes out so quickly. And in fact, 
Uh, I ran across a few funny things. It was a few weeks ago now. You've all heard the dumb criminal stories. Uh, I got a, just a couple of dumb lawyer stories. Yeah. And these apparently, and I've, I've seen a lot of these several places, and they say they're true. It's questions by the lawyer, answers by the witness. And the lawyer always starts out. And the, in the first one, and what did he do then? He came home, the witness, he came home and the next morning he was dead. Lawyer. So when he woke up the next morning, he was dead? <laughs> Lawyer. Oh, this is a good one. <clears throat> Did you ever stay all night with this man in New York? And the female witness. I refuse to answer that question. Lawyer. Did you ever stay all night with this man in Chicago? Witness. I refuse to answer that question. Did you ever stay all night with this man in Miami? No. <laughs> The witness wasn't thinking in that case. And one more, the lawyer. How, and this must be, by the way, the witness must be the dad, and you'll see why in a minute. How old is your son, the one living with you? Witness, 38 or 35, I can't remember which. How long has he lived with you? 45 years. <laughs> we, often, we often say silly things without thinking. But don't we often say hurtful things, too? And I've talked to several people, and I've heard of people sharing with others. In an abusive relationship, they would sooner be hit than to be you know, told all the time, you're stupid, you're worthless, you can't do anything. Because those scars are deep. And those scars last. The, the bruises, even the broken bones, so I've been told, they heal. But the mental abuse is something that is so difficult. James says we all stumble and fall when it comes to what we say. And if we're honest, that's true of each one of us, isn't it? We've all said things that either on purpose or maybe without thinking that have hurt others, that have not reflected well on our Lord and on our faith. And like James says, we all are in need of forgiveness for the things we say. Thankfully, we have a God who says many things to us. He says, I have called you by name. You are mine. The free gift of God is eternal life. Jesus, when he was here on earth, said a lot. But the thing that I think sticks with me the most is on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Because I think so often that applies to me. Father, forgive me. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm thinking. And to each one of us, and to me, God says, you are forgiven. You are mine. You are free. And in that freedom, then, we can go out and use our words to, to build others up, to encourage them, to tell them, God loves you. Jesus died for you. And that forgiveness and that freedom can be yours, too. And none of us are perfect, but we're all forgiven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand as we continue confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I have a few prayer requests for today. 
the first one yesterday, I'm sure you all know, was 20 years since the terrorist attacks in New York. And so we want to we want to remember those who were uh, affected by that, however that might be. Uh, also, Julie Belrose has asked us to pray for the family of her brother-in-law. Uh, Todd is his name, and they have, uh, I guess, three older teen and young 20s kids. They were in a car accident, and Todd, the dad, was killed. So we want to pray for that family. Uh, for Judith Liskey, uh, she is continuing in hospital and recovering from her hip uh, surgery. And now they are waiting for a spot to open up in extended care for her. And so we pray that that will happen soon and here in Campbell River. For Val Wallace, as she continues her physical therapy in Nanaimo. Uh, for Sarah. Sarah, if you remember several weeks back, Sarah hurt her knee and they were trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, she's now, probably because she was favoring the other knee, she's hurt the, first, the second knee. Uh, and is in a lot of pain and back on crutches again. Uh, and also, if you were here last week, you will have heard that Lee Skelton is moving to the interior. Uh, and so, Lee, is, will this be your last Sunday here? Or? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we want to pray for Lee uh, as she goes out to move, move out to live with her family. Um, oh, and also, Steiner, I haven't had a chance to catch you before church lately. How are things with your... Medical stuff? Is it settled down? Or have they found anything? Sorry to put you on the spot, by the way, but... Nothing changed. So no change? Are they still investigating? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So also pray for you with continued testing. Are there any other prayer requests? Prayer for, for Ellen, please. For Ellen? Okay. Okay. Yeah, Ellen was in the hospital with back issues this last week. Uh, home now. And Guy. Yeah, pray for my mom, Doris Wallace. And that, that she, she was able to come back to Campbell River and find a spot here. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. Any other? Kathy. I'm having eye surgery on Tuesday. Oh, okay. We're all blinking a little faster now. <laughs> okay, let's bow our heads as we continue in prayer. <clears throat> Dear good and gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would be with the people, uh, whoever they may be and wherever they may be, whose lives were touched by the events that happened 20 years ago yesterday for those who lost loved ones, for those who were injured, for those who are, are feeling pain and loss, and it's come to the surface again. We ask, Lord, that you would bring healing to them. We ask that you would bring peace to our world and, and a freedom from struggle, that your spirit would be at work in the hearts and lives of people wherever they may be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for Todd's family as they come to grips with his death. Lord, we thank you for being with the rest of the family and keeping them safe in the accident. And we pray that you'd continue to go with them now, to give them comfort and strength, to guide them through the difficult times ahead, that they would feel your presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you continue to be with Judith in hospital that she would uh, continue to grow stronger and recover mobility. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, bring an opening in an extended care home so that she can, can continue her recovery there and receive the care that she needs. Be with Colin and with all of the family as they work uh, to care for her and support each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we thank you for the therapy Val's receiving down in Nanaimo, and we pray that you would continue to grant her strength, uh, return to mobility, and we pray that she would very quickly be able to come home and, and join us here again to worship you as part of our family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And dear Father, we ask that you'd be with Sarah as she's dealing with a, a second knee that's giving her pain and, and issues with her mobility. Lord, we pray that you'd guide the doctors as they dig into what's going on. 
And we pray, Lord, that it is something that they can quickly take care of to give her relief from the pain and to give her back the mobility so she can enjoy life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Lee, for the many years that she's been a member of our congregation, uh, for the blessing that she's been, and for the gifts and talents she shared with us in service to you. And we pray, Lord, that you would go with her now as she moves out to be with her family, that you would keep all of them safe in their travels, that the move would go smoothly, and that it would be a blessing to all of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with Steiner as they do further testing and investigation. Lord, we pray that you would lead the doctors to the, the cause of whatever it is that's going on. We pray that it would be something that could be treated. And we ask, Lord, that you would give Steiner patience in all of the waiting and the wondering, that you would strengthen him with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for being with Ellen this past week uh, and for giving her relief from the pain, blessing her in her time in hospital. And we pray that you would continue to be with her to grant continued healing, that you protect her from further flare-ups. And Lord, we pray that you would guide her in these days ahead uh, as her roommate's moving out and she'll need to find someone else. Lord, we pray that you would guide her to the right person who will be a blessing to her and who she can bless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you'd be with Doris Wallace as she is in a home down in Duncan. We thank you for the care that she's receiving there. And we ask, however, that you'd make a space available for her up here so she can come closer to home, to family, and to all of her friends in the community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we ask that you'd be with Kathy as she goes for eye surgery this Tuesday, that the procedure would go well, uh, that you'd give her calm and peace in the, the days of waiting, and that the procedure would do what needs to be done. We thank you for being with her, watching over her, and keeping her in all things. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus, who's taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I lift my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who watches over you will not fall asleep. He who keeps watch over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord will guard you. He is by your side to protect you. The sun shall not strike by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep you safe. He will protect you as you come and go, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn. Thank <laughs> you. 